This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Thank you, Father. We thank Thee that the Lord God Almighty is concerned about that poor lost sheep that has gone astray. In Jesus' name, our Father, I pray that if there is a lost one, and surely, Father, there is, there are no doubt many, but I pray that one soul, some soul, will be born again today in Jesus' precious name, Amen. We read again today the same verse I read yesterday. As I said, we could we could stay on it a month, easily a month, if we should use all the references in the Bible concerning John 1.18. No man has seen God any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. Now notice that. You remember Jesus said, many times, I say many times, several times, while here upon this earth, he referred to my Father which is in heaven, and he referred to himself as being in heaven, the Son of Man which came down from heaven, and so on. Now, here, notice it is in, he is in the bosom, yet he is there speaking at the time. Now, you cannot separate. Now, I mean by that, I mean you cannot separate Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as having to do with God's eternal plan of the ages. God the Father in the beginning, God the Son in the beginning, God the Spirit in the beginning, Father, Son, Holy Ghost in the beginning. Now, Jesus was on earth, the Father was in heaven. He said, I'm in the Father, the Father in me. The Father was in heaven, yet he was on earth. Jesus was on earth, yet he was in heaven. You say, I can't understand that. Neither can the chemist and the scientist that have uh, put uh, men in outer space, and I'm not critical, and I'm not preaching about outer space, and I'm not preaching about the space program. But you must admit that we have giants today, mental giants. We have giants in chemistry, giants in physics, giants in mathematics, and giants in astrology. And we have many giants on earth today. But men cannot understand the great God the Head, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, one God, yet manifest in three persons. But believers do not let this, that is, that man cannot understand, we do not let it bother us, because the just shall live by faith. All right, so he is in the bosom of the Father, that sweet communion and that close fellowship in the bosom of the Father. Now, here's the statement we're using today, he hath declared him. He hath declared him. Now, I made this statement on the radio. You know, I've been speaking on the radio more than 26 years every day. And there's not much that I haven't said. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't mean that I have preached all there is to be preached. I don't, I don't mean that. I don't mean that I've exhausted the Bible. If I lived another hundred years and I preached every day, I'd never touch the hem of the garment. But when I say that I've said that before on the radio, you forgive me because I remember almost everything I say on the radio. And I've been on the radio so long, and I've been preaching this gospel so long. When I repeat, I know it. But I've made this statement on the radio, and I make it again today. I'm glad that my God is bigger and wiser and more powerful than a human being. I'm glad that my God is greater than I. And that makes me have more faith in him. And God didn't call upon me to understand the Bible. God called upon me to preach the word, to be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. I confess, I do not deny, there are many things about the Bible that I cannot understand, but I accept them. Now, I think you'll agree to the statement that I'm about to make. We cannot comprehend... An eternal spirit. Now, my mind, in other words, I get dizzy in my head when I sit down sometimes alone and I study alone all the time for radio and for the books. I spend hours and hours alone. And I get dizzy when I begin thinking. Now, God, God, just think. 
he spoke and this world was made. You say, preacher, do you believe that? With all my heart. With all my heart. He spoke and the sun, that gigantic blazing sun, 93 million miles from this earth. And it uh, it's there because God spoke. God just spoke and there it is. Now, when electricity was discovered, my, we thought, what a, what a wonderful discovery. And when Edison discovered the, you know, the light bulb and all of that, my, isn't it marvelous? I sit here today, and if it were not for electricity, of course, I could not be operating the equipment that I'm using now to send this voice to every state in the Union, Canada, Mexico, and by short wave around the world. I couldn't do it if it were not for electricity. And, of course, I'm using a light right here. Now, I'm saying that to say this. Man labors. Just think, for instance, it's cost us $40 billion. Now, that staggers me. $40 billion to put a man on the moon. Didn't cost God anything. God just said, let there be a lesser light, and there it was. God just made it, see? Now, you, you, you cannot, and I cannot, and the finite mind cannot comprehend God. God is an eternal spirit. In John 4, Jesus told the woman at the well, God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. Now, I cannot comprehend an eternal spirit. There was never a time when God was not. God has always been. God had no beginning. In the beginning, God. God was before the beginning. There's never been a time in the eternity behind us when God was not. But listen, I can believe this, and I can understand it. And I can understand it and believe it better today than men could a hundred years ago. With the advancement in medicine and the things that men have done, I can understand it. I can comprehend that a baby was born 1,900 years ago plus, and they named him Jesus. I can comprehend that. And I can believe that because the Bible teaches it and there is so much other evidence to prove it. You say, Mr. Green, what other evidence is there to prove that a baby was born? Well, you're listening to a voice that is the evidence. 31 years ago plus when God saved me. Now, if I live until Valentine's Day, February the 14th, I'll be 51 years old. If I live until the 14th of February, I'll be 51. That's my birthday, Valentine's Day. And I've said that to drive home this. 51 years old, 31 years of it, plus, has been as different from the first part of my life as daylight is different from darkness. Beloved, did you know I started using tobacco when I was five years old? That's a fact. That is an absolute fact. I would steal cigarettes from my older brothers when I was five years old and smoke them five years old. Now, that's a fact. I started drinking hard liquor when I was nine. When I was 13, I was riding with a seasoned bootlegger at night, hauling liquor. Now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, beloved. I mean it. And it's very, very seldom that I ever mention these things on the radio. But during the 20th year of my life, God saved me. One night in a little country Baptist church, just a very humble little frame building, very humble little white frame church. God's man preached on the wages of sin is death, and God convicted me, and God drew me, and I accepted Jesus. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it, but I wanted to be saved. And when I arrived home, I fell on my knees in the bedroom by the window, and I looked out the window, and I said, Dear God, you're up there, and I don't know how to pray, and I don't know what to say, and I don't know how to ask you for what I want, but I said, God, you know I want to be saved, and God saved me. Now listen. Up to that hour, I was living in darkness, and that moment, God turned on the light. No, I don't mean God put a light on in my room. Uh Uh-uh, no. God put a light on in my heart. I don't mean God lit up my bedroom. No, no. I mean God lit up my heart. Now, Jesus is the light. 
Now you say, preacher, can you prove that Jesus was born? Can you prove that Jesus died? Can you prove that Jesus rose again? Can you prove that Jesus lives? I certainly can. Certainly can. I'm living evidence. And not only I, but praise God, I've, I've met and I've seen and I've talked to tens of thousands these many years that I've been preaching the gospel that have been saved. Hallelujah. So we know that Jesus lives because those of us who are born again, he lives in our heart. Now, Jesus came into the world. He left the bosom of the Father, and he came to declare God, the eternal spirit. Jesus was God in flesh. Now, let me state it this way. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Father's expositor or God's interpreter. Now, I had the privilege, of course, uh, for the last uh, uh, few years, I have not had the opportunity to go to the mission fields because of my health. But up until I had a very grave operation seven years ago now, I made a trip to the mission field every year, and I spoke through an interpreter. I would speak in the English language, and the missionary would take my English words and put them in the language of the people. Now listen, Jesus took God in a body of flesh. Jesus, let me put it this way, Jeremiah said, a woman shall compass a man. Jesus wrapped up God in flesh and Jesus brought God down to man and God in Jesus walked up and down this land, up and down, of course, the uh, Judea and Jerusalem and Samaria and all over that countryside and uh, the Sea of Galilee and all over. He, God, walked around in Jesus and Jesus declared him. You know, one of my favorite passages, one of my favorite passages is in this Gospel of John, the Pharisees and the scribes and the elders and the chief priests, they said, now, we've let this, we've let this rabble rouser, Jesus Christ, go far enough. In fact, we've let him go too far. Now, we're going to stop him. We're going to shut his mouth. You know, that's what the liberals say. The liberals say we're going to shut the mouth of these fanatical preachers that are always talking about blood, 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 mourners, bench, repent. Yes, they'll never shut the mouths of God's preachers. They may, they may make it hard on us, but they'll never shut our mouths. So the chief priests sent the officers to arrest him. And they made one mistake. Jesus was conducting a street meeting when they arrived. We'll talk about it when we get over there in a little while. And the officers, instead of rushing in and arresting him, they stood on the sideline, I suppose, out of respect they allowed him to finish his message. And that's where Satan made a grave mistake. Because when Jesus finished their message, they couldn't arrest him. You know why? The words of Jesus had handcuffed their heart. The, the words of Jesus arrested the officers. They couldn't arrest Jesus. And when they went back to the temple and the chief priest and the elders and the scribes said, Where is he? Where is he? Why didn't you bring him? Where is he? You know what they said? You know what they said? They didn't say we were afraid of the mob. They didn't say we were afraid that we couldn't handle him. They didn't say that. You know what they said? They said, never man speak like this man. Never man speak like this man. He said to the blinded eyes, be open. They were open. To the withered limbs, straighten out. They straightened out. He said to a man been dead four days. And his sisters begged Jesus not to open the tomb. Don't roll the stone away. He has been dead four days. And beloved, they didn't embalm poor men like Lazarus in that day. They, the, of course, some of the kings and so forth were embalmed, but not Lazarus. He, he was, he died and they buried him. The way they do in the mission field today, back in the jungles, when a person dies in the morning, they must bury them before the sun goes down. If they die at night, they bury them the next morning because they do not embalm the bodies. And so Lazarus was not embalmed. And so they said, he's been dead four days. He stinketh. But Jesus said, roll away the stone. Then he said, Lazarus, come forth. And you know the story. He came forth bound hand and foot. And I had the privilege of going down in that tomb. 
Now, you may think the grave of Lazarus was just six feet deep, but you go over to uh, the land of uh, Palestine, and you go to the tomb of Lazarus, and you'll find that it's about, I don't remember the exact number, 15 or 18 steps down in the ground in a cave where the body of Lazarus was. And so he was bound hand and foot, but that didn't bother one thing. When the Lord God Almighty says, come forth, mister, you'll come forth. Drunkard, doper, liar, thief, murderer, it doesn't make any difference. Bound hand and foot, wrapped up in grave clothes. When God says, come forth, you'll come forth. And so he, the, the officer said, never man spake like this man. Now, when I, when I begin talking about the Word of God, I, I tell you, I just forget myself, and, and I, won't, I want to finish this verse today. So let me say this. If Jesus came to declare God, what did Jesus declare? I think we should look first and, of course, briefly at John 3.16. Now, you, you know the story, and we'll study it fully when we get there. Nicodemus came to Jesus, and he was a Pharisee. He was a master. He had a master's degree in religion. He was a master in Israel. He was a religious doctor. He was a religious ruler. And Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then, for God so loved. Now, Jesus said, Nicodemus, God loved so much that he gave his only begotten son. And that was Jesus, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. The law came by Moses, grace and truth. Jesus Christ, verse 17, John 1, 17. Jesus Christ, Jesus is grace, Christ is truth. Jesus is the name Savior, Christ is his name of deity. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, remember, Nicodemus was in the day and in a religion of rituals, feasts, festivals, holy days, holidays, the law, keeping the law, and the Sabbaths, and so on. And so it must have been refreshing when Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I will give you rest. He said, Nicodemus, whosoever believeth, Jew, Gentile, rich, poor, bond or free, slave, slave master, governor, president, it makes no difference, multimillionaire, blind beggar in rags, leper, whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And then Jesus also declared, verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, the world. The whole wide world. You say, preacher, did Jesus die for all sinners? He certainly did. Then you say, he failed. I beg your pardon. Did you know I had a letter in the mail the other day that told me that if what I preach is true, Jesus failed? No, Jesus didn't fail. Jesus died to save sinners, all sinners. God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all, all of us. All of us. God's soul of the world. He is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole wide world. Now that's First John 2, 2. John 3, 16, whosoever. John 3, 17, the world. And don't you ever let anybody tell you that you're predestined to be lost or that you're not chosen to be saved. If you'll come to Jesus, he said to his own people, you will not come to me that you might have life. He said... I would gather you, I would gather you, I would, I wanted to many times gather your children to myself as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not, you would not. So Jesus loved the world, Jesus died for the world. And then he declared, John 3, 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned, already condemned. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now that's what Jesus declared. He declared God's love. He declared God's love for the whole wide world. And he declared the how of salvation and the why of damnation. Now will you listen carefully? Listen carefully. Jesus left the bosom of the Father, John 1.18. He left the bosom to declare God. And the declaration that he made was... 
For my Father, God so loved the world. He so loved the world that whosoever. So he declared God's love. Then he declared that Jesus, that is, God loved the whole wide world and paid the sin debt for the whole wide world. Sinner, sinner. The tragedy of tragedies is that you are a sinner and your sins remain upon you when Jesus bore them and he paid for them and he purchased your redemption and you could be redeemed this split second if you just believe on Jesus. And the tragedy is you're lost and you won't believe you will not receive him. So he declared God's love. He declared God's love for the world. And then he declared the how of salvation. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Then he declared the why of damnation. He that believeth not is condemned already. Now, if you're not saved, it's your fault. Bow your head and close your eyes and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. and He'll save you right now. And you'll know it. Father, in the name of Jesus, the only begotten Son, full of grace and full of truth, He who came to declare the Father's love, the Father's mercy, and the way of salvation. I pray that you'll save every soul that's under conviction, especially that soul that's nearest hell. In Jesus' name, amen.